Hello, my name's Bryn Llewellyn and I'd like to thank Emma and the rest of the team at NTLD uh, Books for this opportunity to, uh, to share and, uh, and also to learn from others. So hopefully the tech will work. Um, I'm going to share the screen and talk about pivoting in a pandemic. So bear with me here. Okay. So here we are, um, and I know there will be people out there who are probably thinking, looks a little bit like train spotting, but it does, yeah? It's purposefully done like that. Why? Because uh, I remember a conversation with Professor Simon Shibley at Sheffield Hallam University. He said, Bryn, you have to think like a drug dealer. You have to think of something that's gonna hook them in and keep them coming back for more and more and more. So um, this is my uh, drug of choice, as it were, uh, it's about moving and learning. It's not physical, it's not PE, it's not sport. Um, it's about moving and learning with purpose. Now I know um, Joe Wicks has done a, a pretty impressive job, hasn't he, with uh, uh, encouraging uh, children and families to become more active and get them off their backsides and get them off their sofa. So all credit to Joe. It's about behavioral change. Now Joe has been deemed the, uh, the nation's PE teacher. But uh, to me, that's more um, PT than PE. And what we're talking about is behavioral change for movement and learning. So uh, let's hook you in with a, a quote. Well, not a quote, but a poem from uh, Michael Rosen. And I think the words are important here, but equally so is the graphic. Um, schools uh, have been... Uh, constrained uh, with a, a very narrow uh, data-driven um, curriculum. And uh, my worry is that when schools back go back, will they feel pressured to, uh, to, to pursue English and maths and maths and English only? Or are we gonna be brave enough to stand up for what we believe in and really, really deliver that cross-curricular uh, curriculum? But also maybe put more of an emphasis on the on the emotional well-being and the physical well-being of our, of our students, our learners, and ourselves as teachers and school leaders. So um, here we have uh, Michael. Uh, he is a, a legend in my in, in my eyes. Absolutely gorgeous. And another message there talks about learning is fun, but maybe that shouldn't be learning is fun. Maybe we should have changed that, and it should have been about making learning irresistible the way that Mick Waters used to talk about and probably still does. Let's hook the children in by making learning irresistible. So before we start talking about the education issues, I just wanted to share some of the health issues. Um, we've got more and more children being deemed uh, obese or overweight. And um, not only that, they're, they're becoming obese uh, at earlier ages and staying obese for longer. And then if you look at the, the economic situation, the obesity rates are the highest for children from deprived areas. And this, this research came to, came to the fore when I was working with some schools before, um, before Christmas. So I was working with a, a school down in Harrow in North London, an affluent area. Uh, the children came to the sessions uh, with their, their hoodies, with the, the tennis club, the swimming club, the rugby club, the football club logos on, the, on there. Um, kids were gorgeous. I mean, they got into the physically active learning straight away. They were so lithe, so athletic. Brilliant. Uh, day three was up in Cumbria. Not the best planned of days, I must admit, in terms of six hours drive. Um, but the third day was, as I say, the children got into it. But the difference was you drive through this massive estate to the school and the, the school kids are gorgeous, the, the teachers are, are there, they're, they're just on the ball, they're committed to the learning. But the difference between Harrow and Workington was the size of the children. We had to get the, um, the adult belts, uh, the adult Velcro belts onto the children or some of the children in year four. So um, obviously um, we need to think of the socioeconomic situation. So globally, at least 50% of children are deemed um, insufficiently active. And when you look at westernized countries, it's, uh, it's even worse. Okay? In, in certain westernized countries, you've got four out of five children who are deemed insufficiently active. Um, 
And I think during lockdown, we've probably got a situation whereby some children have been more physically active, you know, those children who've got access to gardens, um, whereas there would be certain children who have been sat at a screen even more so than ever before. So now is the chance to, uh, to, to get the balance right. So if you look at the levels of physical activity, okay, early years and um, key stage one, fine, okay. But then age seven, not year seven, age seven, something happens. That level of physical activity starts to decline. And doing a, a training session at the school, um, one of the teachers said, it's down to SATs, isn't it? It's down to phonic screen. I said, it might be. However, to me, the, the, the prevalent, uh, the, the major determinant is the fact that children at that age start hitting the Xboxes and the Playstations. And that sedentary lifestyle starts happening at age seven. So physical inactivity has been linked to heart disease, cancers, strokes, type two diabetes. Uh, it's also been linked to stress and depression and anxiety. So if physical inactivity is linked to these things, maybe physical activity is linked to positive health. So we've got this, um, this situation. We know that physical activity leads to um, Better, better weight management, um, better bone density, better muscle growth, um, better sleep patterns. And now the, the, the academics are proving that physical activity also has an impact on learning, on cognition, on academic performance. So working with Professor Andy Daly-Smith from Leeds Beckett University, uh, we did a first round of research and the research went to Nesta and Nesta gave it a level five. Andy Daly-Smith got his doctorate on the back of it, so that was great for him as well. We then went to, to share the findings via a TEDx talk. So I'm sure that these video links and slides can be shared via the, uh, the team in, in Buckinghamshire so you can access these videos in your own time and, and share them with others because we need to talk about these issues with our colleagues, uh, whether or not they're fellow teachers or school leaders and also with families as well. So this is what I normally do. I normally do my moving and learning through Tagtivate. And for those of you who don't know what Tagtivate is, think TIG or TAG or TAG Rugby meets Scrabble and Countdown. So the, the tags that the children wear attached to the Velcro belts, they've got letters on, they've got numbers on, and they're our Lego building blocks. And the idea is that they work with each other and um, they, they develop English and maths and knowledge in, in other subjects and other languages using the building blocks that we have there. Uh, the impact is, is, is massive. So we've got quotes uh, left, right and centre. This, this one does jump out at me in terms of a, a quote from a boy in Leicester. Uh, a year four boy and um, he it's about behavioral change and I think that sums up that change of taking the learning out of the classroom or beyond the classroom walls into a physical setting and uh, the image there or a range of images there come from uh, schools in Whitsby and Scarborough so the week before lockdown I was working with teachers and school leaders and children up there and one of the schools was, uh, was actually Simon Smith School, East Whitby Academy. Now, for those of you who don't know, Simon is uh, a, just a wonderful, wonderful school leader and human being. And here he is in, in Wakefield at a, a Bruehead event, sharing some wisdom and um, knowledge bombs, whatever you want to call them. So here's a, a quote from Simon that I picked up on Twitter the other day. And it's talking about reading, because we know that Simon's really keen on picture books and stories, but I think these words here uh, resonate. Um, so reading is the most important thing we teach in our schools. We don't just want children leaving primary able to read. We also want them to leave primary wanting to read. And that just doesn't happen. And having read Gavin Williamson's advice and the DfE recommendations that came out, um, just yesterday. There, there seems to be a push on children sitting down, looking towards the front, and the, um, there seems to be an emphasis on reading, but let's not just do the SPAG stuff, let's not just do the comprehension stuff, let's get our children, um, you know, having that desire to, to that, that love of reading. So um, 
my pivot in the pandemic, as I say, one minute I'm working with schools up on the North Yorkshire coastline, the next minute all the school bookings are lost completely. And um, the BBC get in touch and just say, Bryn, will you write some content and some scripts for the BBC Bite Size? And uh, when I look back on those manic, manic 12 weeks of uh, writing, you know, the, the, uh, the fact that I chid it, the, the irony that I uh, challenged sedentary lifestyles was not lost on me, bearing in mind how much time I was spent at a MacBook writing, writing, writing. And um, have a look at the website and it's, you know, there, there is so much content there right the way through from primary into secondary. Um, so yeah, the, the announcement came out from DFE yesterday. I, I looked through it in terms of just focusing on the, the, the PE element, the physical activity element. So now we, we, we've got recommendations of the latest recommendations. Um, that it's up to the schools to have that flexibility to decide how PE and sport and physical activity will be provided, so long as it's safe, of course. Um, another uh, uh, snippet from the document, outdoor sports should be prioritised where possible. And I can see the logic in this in terms of, um, you know, the, the open air, uh, the space. Uh, these things will help children in terms of uh, giving us increased opportunities to learn safely. But I would change that sports. I would change it to sports and physical activity. In fact, you know what? I would change it to learning. Take the learning outdoors as much as we can. And I'll be talking about that in a little bit. Also, uh, let's, let's not keep those, those people uh, out there at bay. Uh, you've got some great expertise out there. Uh, bring them in, get them to work with your teachers and children. It's still allowed to happen. And then there's um, some wordage there, there's some wording there talking about active miles, making break times and lessons more active and encouraging active travel. So active miles to me, there's a lot of schools that talk about um, the daily mile. And uh, some of you will know that the daily mile has since become the occasional mile, the once in a while mile. And why has that happened? It's because if you make children do something every day, chances are it'll appeal to certain children, but not to all children. In fact, it might have a detrimental effect and turn certain children off physical activity. So be wary. It is not the silver bullet that certain people portray it to be. Um, this is what I was talking about before the, uh, the announcement yesterday. And I was talking about the fact that we, we're, we're teaching and learning in a, a completely different scenario and have been for the past three months or whatever. It's about blended learning. It's about blended teaching. It's about blending the analog with the digital. It's about using BBC Bite Size and other providers, but it's also about doing the hands-on stuff for those children who don't have access to technology. Um, another quote that's come to, to mind is, know thy data. And it's a quote that comes from John Hattie. And it's about the school leaders. You guys know your schools better than anybody else. You know what makes the children tick. You know about the foibles of your staff, your colleagues. You know about the families. You know about the situation in the community. You know the stuff that's going on in your school. And you know how to, uh, to take the learning on from now on in. In terms of PE and sport, I would say you've got people like AFPI, the Association for PE. You've got LEA advisors in some instances, and they've got guidance and risk assessments there ready for you to use to take PE and sport and develop those areas uh, safely. Uh, I would also ask people to think differently. And if you've got you know, planned PE units of work, maybe scrap them or adjust them in light of social and uh, physical distancing. So if we, uh, we're thinking about the, um, the provision, so if I'm saying that, uh, how about what could we use instead of those, uh, those proposed units of work? I would say we've got some great stuff there. We've got some digital content from Supermovers. Um, we've mentioned BBC Bite Size. Look at the Supermovers stuff as well to uh, maybe get those active energizers taking place in the classrooms. A lot of dancing going on in super movers, but dance in other areas too. I think dance is just a great way to develop children's physical activity levels. Uh, great providers out there, whether it's Challenge 59 or um, Dance One Nation or the Royal Opera House or whatever, there are so many people, organizations out there who are willing and wanting to help you. 
it's not just about running around it's about uh, moving with purpose and also it's about like yes you've got moderate to vigorous levels of physical activity but you've also got lower levels of physical activity too and slowing it right the way down and talking about yoga and mindfulness will certainly help your children and your staff maybe in terms of just putting things into perspective being mindful of what's going on and my, my life is normally like full on in terms of driving here, there and everywhere, working with different schools. Um, I would say lockdown has meant that I've had a chance to go through the art of noticing and slowing things down. When I was a, a deputy head teacher at a school in Bradford, it was part of KPUK and Create. And uh, we were given money to work with artists and dramatists and musicians. And one of the best ways that we utilize, uh, one of the best ways was to give each child a sketchbook so they could document how they thought, how they felt, and all those processes could be recorded. I think that would be a great way forward in terms of, you know, the children have these sketchbooks to act as a journal and then they can share them if they want. And then they can talk about them with friends and, uh, and teachers as well. Um, what else have we got? I've mentioned the, the daily mile, the daily distance, but how about mixing it up and mashing it up with other things? So could you link it to maths? Of course you can, it's the element of times, etc., and recording distances. But also you could have it, the children are chanting their times tables as they uh, do their circuit or whatever. Give them a question, a philosophy for children question, say for example, hey guys, is it ever all right to steal? And as the children are running or jogging, uh, they think about the, that question. They talk about it with a colleague, uh, a friend, as they're jogging and running. And then they get back to the, 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 main, the main area. And we talk about it as a class or as a bubble and uh, talk about these issues. Um, we've mentioned the daily distance. Athletics lend itself to uh, using simple resources that can be cleaned quickly and efficiently. Um, we've also got skipping. Skipping to me is brilliant. Not that I'm any good at skipping, but there's, uh, there's people out there like Skipping Schools and others who could provide you with uh, not just the resources, but also the, the, um, the tuition and the guidance on how to get the children to skip We're using different uh, techniques. And you could do this skipping in, in grid learning grid learning opportunities. So I know during uh, lockdown, there were images of children in, um, in France, I think it was, and they were all in their little grids. Admittedly, they looked a little bit like I don't know, prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, they looked very sad, but with the right structure and support, you could get something that was kind of cute, whereby the children develop games within their own little grids and then move on. Um, I've got PB Me there as well, personal best, my effort. And that's about the children challenging, not each other, but challenging themselves. So day one, they record how many skips they did, how many jumps they did in a minute or whatever. And then the following day, they do the same, but record, can they get more and beat the personal best from before? Uh, behind the screen there, it has the word orienteering. So we've got running, we've got athletics, we've got skipping, but orienteering. How cute is that in terms of those geographical skills that we could get across? Yeah. Could you link the geography to other subjects as well? So it's not just map reading skills, it's about other elements as well. And this is what I've been doing over the, uh, the past uh, month or so, supporting schools as they uh, widen their reopening. So we've got schools teaching in bubbles at the moment, and the bubbles could be seven, eight, 12, 15, whatever. But if we're looking ahead, those bubbles could well be 30, but those opportunities to take the learning outside for English, mathematics, science, geography, history, and so forth. There are so many opportunities there to do so. So um, by all means, look at, look at the website and check out though how easy it is to do so. Um, in terms of taking the learning outside, uh, as I say, I used to be a, a primary teacher, deputy head teacher, acting head teacher. Taking the learning beyond the classroom was quite easy for me because I knew it was, at the, it, it was at the core of what I wanted to do. You know, I got into teaching to change the world. I came from a very left of centre green background and I, I wanted children to be more aware of the environment and it was about environmental education, teaching about the environment, through the environment, for the environment. So taking the learning outside was easy for me, but I understand it might not be for other teachers. 
So I would certainly recommend this book. So it's a, a book by a lady called Juliet Robertson and it's available on Crown House and Independent Thinking uh, Worldwide. Brilliant, brilliant book. And I go back to it time and time again to refresh and remind myself about um, how we can do that. Um, another reference point is podcasts. And anything to do with PE and sport and physical activity and physical and emotional well-being. My go-to person is Ryan Ellis. So he's a qualified coach and teacher uh, living and working in the north of England in, in Yorkshire. And he interviews people, practitioners, researchers from the UK and, and Australia and uh, America and UAE and other places. And I tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to, hopefully I'm going to keep my fingers crossed here that if I press play, it will actually play a little snippet from a guy called Mike Kazala, who's a, a teacher and practitioner from America. So I did say that that might not work. So we'll try again. And hopefully here we go. If you are looking for a more fulfilling job, a more fulfilling profession, creating more motivated students, uh, making sure your students are engaged and ready to learn, uh, most likely going to lead to higher academic achievement, just a better quality of teaching and learning in both the teaching process and the learning process, give this a try. It is real, it works, it has research to support it, and you will just absolutely love it. Start small and take baby steps, but start and move forward. Okay. Wise words there, but that's what it's about at the moment. We have to take those small steps and we have to continually do the risk assessments to see what's happening in terms of this ever-changing landscape. So, um, as I say, there's uh, some links there on social media for Tagtivate. As I say, that's just one tool that we can use to encourage moving and learning. Uh, we can always talk about Move and Learn, which is a, a kick. Uh, a community interest company that's been set up by myself and a head teacher from Leeds. Uh, we're there to support. Uh, we will make mistakes along the way, but hey, we learn from those mistakes. So thank you very much to Emma and the rest of the team down in Buckinghamshire. Um, let's see. Uh, any questions, just ask, fire them to me and uh, we'll get back to you ASAP. So continue the learning, stay safe and everything else. So um, thank you very much.